Hello and welcome to today's session, Dynamics 365 for Sales Forecasting. So let's dive in and take a look. I'm logged in under my standard sales user within the sales hub. If I scroll down under performance, you're going to see goals and now you're going to see forecasts. If I go ahead and click on forecasts, we're going to go into the ones that have actually previously created. And what I want to show you today is just an example of what a quarterly forecast would look like. So in this example, um, you know, management would have multiple users. In my demo environment, I've got a single user. You can see what their actual sales quota is for this particular quarter, which is quarter two, 2020. What the system has based off of predictions, where we are best case, and that's going to be strictly made off of the opportunities that are created inside the pipeline. I also have the ability to look at you know, what the sales rep has decided to commit to, what's been lost, what's been admitted obviously what has been won, and then what's really truly in the pipeline based off of all of that. Now, a couple of things we can do right here on this, on this screen is if I go ahead and click on the sales user, we're now shown all of the opportunities that make up the forecast that we're currently calculating, along with you know, the customer name, the, best, the, the pipeline forecast category, estimated close date and revenue. And the great thing is I can actually move things right from here. So for example, I think the service opportunity we're working is now something I want to go ahead and commit to. I'm going to go ahead and change that right here on this view, and it's going to move that dollar amount from best case to committed, recalculate my forecast, and then see the change in revenue. Now, if I'm working with management, management wants to go ahead and adjust this based off of different discussion points that they're having with sales, or maybe there's an individual sales rep that we know that uh, has happy ears and you know everything seems to be an opportunity that's committed. We wanna make some adjustments in that and you know adjust that down based off of those, those comments. One of the other great things that we can do just from this screen in this grid view is we can show this in the Kanban view. So this Kanban view is gonna allow me to take all of the opportunities set up in the pipeline management stages and allow me to look at the things that we have in each individual category. So for example, you know, I wanted to move something out of best case and into uh, the pipeline stage. I could just simply drag and drop and do that and it would recalculate the opportunity values. So in addition to looking at this in a, in a Kanban view, we also have the ability to look at trends. And this will take the quarterly forecast that we're looking at for quarter two for this individual sales user and, and look at the trends. How is information moving up and down based off of pipeline movement, based off of working that customer through the journey? You can see that we've got the, uh, we're gonna go ahead and look at the committed and you can see there's a little bit of up and down. There's some, there's some flat areas, a plateau, and then you know, we've dropped down and then we've got some additional movement up and down. So this gives us a good indication of kind of where things are sitting, you know, what, you know, what things are, are moving in the pipeline based off of the various stages and values that we've associated to it. And we can look at how things move day to day through time from uh, the beginning of the quarter to where we are today. So we can see where the peaks and valleys are. You know, do we have a, a sales rep that starts off high and then everything towards the end of the quarter gets down to a cliff? And then we can measure that obviously against the uh, sales quota that we have in here of 325,000. And if we wanna take it a step further and be able to analyze the, the movement between one date in, in time and another date in time, we can use this flow feature, which is part of the, the premium features available with, um, with forecasting. And this just literally takes a snapshot of, of, of information from two different periods. So if I look at the beginning of the quarter and I look at the data from the end of the quarter, I can go ahead and run that view. Then I can see you know, really how information is being flowed and where it ends up in. So you know, how much data started off in the actual physical committed bucket and then got moved to either omitted or committed. So at the beginning of the period, we started off with one dollar amount, and at the end of this particular snapshot view, we have a different dollar amount. Now, the great thing is I can go ahead and click on this information and actually see the data that supports that. So we can see we've got a couple of different opportunities that we're currently working on, and one of them moved from uh, committed to omitted, which ultimately resulted in the shift in pipeline value for that particular forecast category um, you know, down to the admitted section. So again, I have the ability to analyze this information in different ways and forms. I can click on the different snapshot areas to really understand the flow of information to get to that deeper analysis of what's going on. And then I can see how information flows from one snapshot view to another snapshot view to get an understanding of how my sales team is forecasting. What are they doing with those forecasts? How deals are flowing through our forecast to get deeper analysis and a, and a more concrete understanding so my pipeline forecasts can be more accurate.
So what I'd like to do now is kind of walk you through how we go about setting this information up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on sales and now we're gonna to go to app settings to actually get to the physical uh, forecast configuration. And if you notice under uh, performance management, you're gonna see forecast configuration. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and we're gonna be presented with um, the actual forecast creator. And you can do it a couple of different ways. You can do it based off of an organizational chart or you can do it based off of a territory if you're running sales territories. So what I wanna do is I wanna um, go ahead and we're gonna take a look at what we created today for the actual quarterly forecast that we went ahead and built. So you can see there's a small guided process that walks us through all the necessary steps. You know, if I go back to the beginning, you know, we're asking you what entity that we're rolling this up to. Is there any particular hierarchy we need to go ahead and, and look at? And then, you know, how are we building up this forecast? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? You know, what forecast uh, period are we starting in and how many periods are we going to go, you know, go through? So that's the first step you need to understand in really building out your forecast. Now we're going to get into permissions. Obviously, you can add in additional layers of security if you need to. Um, in my environment, I have a single user, so I'm fine with what we have. And then we get into the actual layout. So this is where we can start to add in uh, you know, columns that we can go ahead and, and consider. Now, first and foremost, the default view is going to be that opportunity forecast view that we looked at on the previous screen. And then from here, I can add in um, additional, basically, you know, what we call filters to the forecast. So in the model that we put together, we have, you know, our quota, our prediction, best case, committed, lost, omitted, pipeline, and one. Now, one and lost are going to be based off of, you know, standard um, win-loss functionality inside of the pipeline. But, um, you know, pipeline, omitted, uh, committed, and best case are going to be items that are going to be driven off of a forecast category that will end up being on the actual physical opportunity record. And then predictions are going to be, you know, what the system thinks is going to happen based off of all that modeling. And then finally, the last piece is, you know, adding in your quota. And this is really where I think Microsoft, at least on the CRM side, made it real easy. I can actually go ahead and download a, um, a, a sample uh, template where I can go ahead and populate my forecast amounts. Um, I'm sorry, populate my quota amounts. Um, for each period and then I can go ahead and upload that right back here and finish it and it would go ahead and build out that forecast for me making it active now to add a snapshot with that premium feature you need to come in here and click on add or view snapshots now I've got a bunch of them set up um, I would encourage everybody to at least think about naming them based off of the period you're taking the snapshot um, so you know you might use the date or um, you know the, the period within the quarter you're looking at but all you simply do is go ahead and add in snapshot. Um, for my demo purposes, I'm just going to do snap eight because uh, that's the next one in line. Click on go ahead and it's going to create that snapshot for me. Now you can only create one snapshot every 24 hours. Um, but again, it's going to allow me to analyze data between the, the 19th of the month all the way back to my first snapshot, which is the, the 26th of March. So I can look at a good subsection of, of data as I'm moving through my forecast trying to understand deal flow and how information is moving. So one of the things that's gonna impact a forecast is going to be how do you categorize those opportunities that, that are there. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch back to the sales view and we're actually gonna go into an opportunity record to see you know, when information gets presented onto the form. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select opportunities um, and then we're gonna go ahead and see that information. But before I do that, I just wanna pause here real quick so what we're looking at is, um, again, that Kanban view that we saw you know, out on the actual physical um, forecast. We're now seeing that for all of the opportunities that we have kind of in the bucket. So you know, I can, again, drag and drop and move things from period to period, and it'll automatically recalculate and show me my sales funnel in a Kanban view, which is actually a nice new feature. Um, if you want to switch that back and you want to just, you know, for example, you know, only only look at this information as a, uh, a grid, you certainly can do that as well. And it'll kind of put it back to that view for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and we're going to um, open up an opportunity here. I'm just going to open up a quick one that we have for a service opportunity that we're working on. And you are going to notice that there is um, a forecast category that is going to be there that's going to really drive the various buckets that we look at from an information perspective. So if I click on the on the drop downs uh, in a moment, you're going to be able to see all the different categories that we, we saw a few moments ago. 
um, where we've got pipeline, best case, committed, omitted, won and lost. You know, those forecast categories, again, are going to help drive where things sit in those individual buckets. Um, it gives management the ability to, if they want to, layer in additional forecast categories. You can do that. Um, and again, all sales and users really have to focus in on is obviously working their opportunities the way they would normally. Um, and then you're asking them to, you know, give me a forecast. Is this something that we're going to commit to? Is this something that we think we're going to get in this particular quarter? You know, I can go ahead and change that. And it's going to go ahead in the background and recalculate the forecast for me based off of the change that I made here on the opportunity record. So again, the whole concept here is better forecasting, better visibility into pipeline, an understanding of deal flow and how things move from one date and time to another date and time, um, no matter how you're looking at a forecast, whether it's on a monthly period or a quarterly period. So I'm really excited about this feature. You know, please reach out to uh, Sickage if you're interested in learning more and we're looking forward to hearing from you.